What's up XRP family? Thank you guys for joining this video. There is a lot to talk about. We have some good videos to show you guys. According to a new report from Uniper Research, the global value of CBDCs will grow dramatically from 100 million today to 213 billion by 2030. That is a significant decrease, guys. That is a lot, right? That is maybe times 20 as it is right now. And you can understand that if this is times 20, the the liquidity that is needed is way more, like maybe even times 50, because you need double the liquidity of what you're doing, right? So you can clearly see, guys, that the liquidity will increase massively. And this is the Digital Pound Foundation saying this. Now, look who they are tagging, and this is not coincidence, right? As Palau and Bhutan already have a CBDC running on the XRP ledger. Brazil is is doing its CBDC. Montenegro, I'm not sure about. Europe is creating a digital euro. And the UK is also creating a digital pound. All using the help of Ripple. This is not coincidence. Again, guys, you can clearly see, right? They're telling you by 2030 what CBDs will be doing, right? That is a lot. Pay attention to the dates. Utility will rise. The European Parliament is expected to vote on the bill in February 2023 after formal approval by the Council of the EU, e EU M -E -M -I -C -A, will be published in the EU's official journal and enter into force 20 days later. Mika will generally start applying after a tra transitional period of 18 months, meaning that Mika will likely take effect no earlier than quarter 3, 2024. However, the rules for stablecoins will start applying after a tr transitional period of 12 months and could hence take effect from spring 2024, right? What does that mean? Now, you can clearly see because Europe is also building its digital euro and things are moving fast, guys, faster than you think, right? We just need more patience because you can clearly see that things are moving. But of course, the lawsuit is still in the way. And by the time that this all takes place, guys, it may be that XRP price is already five to ten dollars. It doesn't mean that the price of XRP will move quarter three or spring 2024. We don't know that. It may be, but it may not. It may already be ten dollars, right? So you have to be careful with picking dates or anything like that. You just have to be prepared. SBI Japan, a Ripple partner, released its investor report for the year while news of Ripple and XRP has slowed. Discharged their new approach, one, all crypto efforts centered in SBI VC trade, and two, they are looking towards Web3 more than exchange sales. Now, I have been saying this, right? I've, I've showed this before, but I just want to say it again, guys, because SBI is focusing on Web3 wallets right? Because they understand that this is the future. It is the future, guys, that you have a wallet on your laptop or desktop where you go in or on your phone and you go to a website and you just pay directly instantly with your Web3 wallet. This is what they're targeting, right? Because they understand that this is the end result. This is the future of what you want to have as an economic purpose. This is Steve Fa Favor, for who claimed my live demo video of Spend the Bits was an animation. I chose to edit, explain the process because payments on XRP Ledger are so fast, it's a blur. Real-time Bitcoin from wallet payout in USD using XRP Ledger. Now, I do not have to show you this video, guys, but of course, you know about this. Spend the Bits is, show, is literally showing you how you can send Bitcoin from wallet to wallet, payout in USD, using the XRP ledger. That is insane, right? Because right now, when you do a transaction on the Bitcoin network, it takes a long time. But using the XRP ledger, it takes seconds. You can check Spend the Bits if you don't believe it, because I think Spend the Bits is a um, company which is doing this, and you can clearly use it with um, connecting your XRP kind of wallet and all that stuff. Very interesting. Here we have great response from Arrington when asked what he thinks the SEC and suing Ripple on Leia. Now, guys, this is the most, like the best answer I have seen on the internet 
regarding the SEC and whether it's a security or not or all this bullshit that has been going on, this is the best answer that you can get, right? Like this guy just nils this answer and let's take a look what he's saying. But what I believe is the SEC wants Ripple dead to put a feather in the cap. Um, now, that's pure speculation based on nothing other than speculation. Also, the SEC is an entity that changes over time and is changing right now in terms of SEC chairs. And so what the SEC wants over time is largely going to be dependent on what the executive branch wants over time. And the executive branch just changed. So I have no idea. I have no visibility into what's going to happen to XRP at all. I believe the SEC probably wants us to go to trial. And when it goes to trial, we'll see what happens. Um, but I don't know. And do I think it's a security? From the point of view of the SEC, no. But okay. from the point of view of me, it, this doesn't matter. Like, what's a security? What isn't a security is totally irrelevant. And it really just comes down to like whether you only allow rich people to trade an asset or you allow everybody to trade an asset. And so when you look at like things like Uber, I was able to invest in one of the first rounds of Uber and Airbnb and Pinterest because I had wealth and had a venture fund. Everyday people who are just as smart or smarter than me also wanted to invest in those companies or would have if they could have like looked at the business plans like I did. But the government told them that they're not worthy, that they're too poor, and so they can't make good financial decisions on their own, and so they're not allowed to invest in that. And so they don't get to make 10,000 X returns on things like Uber and Pinterest and Airbnb and other companies. DoorDash is actually a funny one because I said no to it, but all my friends became multi-billionaires on DoorDash. So now it's the same damn thing. The SEC comes in and they say, we don't want, we don't think poor people their definition of poor, are smart enough to make decisions that rich people are, and so we're going to stop them from doing that. That's evil. And so who cares what the definition of a security is at the end of the day? And we can debate that all day, although I'd probably tune out at some point because I don't care. What I do care about is that we should stop fraud and we should allow people to make any decisions that they want to make, financially speaking. And that's it. And that's the end of the conversation from my point of view because I'm only looking at it philosophically. See, so guys, this is exactly what the SEC is doing, right? They're picking parties on who can invest and not. And they are making the decision for you, which is absolutely not fair. Because they don't, they cannot say to you that you cannot invest in something if you choose to. It's your decision, right? Now, this is, the SEC is protecting investors, but they're not protecting. They're preventing people from getting rich because they understand there's a lot of smart people in this world. They understand that XRP is a very valuable digital asset. In America, it's very hard to buy XRP right now. Why is that? Ask yourself, why is that? And this guy is saying that it happened with Uber. It happened with Airbnb. You need to be very well positioned. As they say, the saying goes, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now, this is exactly what he's talking about. This is how they create all these rules to keep you in your place, right? So again, this is another example that being a security or non-security, it's not even relevant. And I've been saying this many times, guys, this is not the issue here. It is not the issue. We are not here to say that XRP is not a security or is a security. It's not about that, right? And you have to understand this if you want to position yourself well. Ripple plans to expand into Dubai. Nevin Blockchain compares the U.S. regulatory environment to the UAE, saying it's night and day. Again, why is he saying this, guys? Again, because there is corruption. Corruption to the finest in the U.S. Let's take a look. How would you characterize the crypto regulatory environment in the, in the Middle East if you had to compare it to what we're seeing in the U.S. right now? I think it's just light. I mean, it's day and night, right? I mean, so what I can see, because I experience mainly uh, the UAE, I think the regulators are very open. Uh, you can come up with an idea, have a dialogue with the regulator, agree on the way forward, and, and you're able to move forward with very quick speed. Also, you're able to very quickly mobilize in terms of team, you're able to scale up and then constantly go back to the regulator if the model changes in some way. So this is this healthy two-way dialogue that's creating the the a fertile ground for companies uh, to grow in the web three space how would you characterize the now you you ask yourself guys what is better for a country this 
or the US, right? Of course, this is the way forward. Of course, this is how innovation can thrive. Now, if the US was smart, they would recognize Ripple as a very valuable company, right? That is solving a, a serious problem, but they're not doing that. People there are thinking about their own pockets. And that's why you have this lawsuit and all these problems going on. It's not that it's not that easy. It's not that simple, right? So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. See you in the next one. Cheers.